Welcome to The Shooting Show. This week, top foxer Mark Ripley shares some of his secrets on how best to catch up with Charlie. So we're out in the open hill this morning. Um, the farmer here has seen uh, quite a few foxes about just of late uh, on the opposite bank here. Now well, I think it's probably um, some couple of cubs and maybe some adults up here. So we're going to sit over uh, watching this valley and um, see if we can't pick one or two of those off. I like to pick mornings where uh, I can come up and uh, the winds aren't too strong so that I know if I do see a fox on the opposite bank then I know I haven't got to worry too much about crosswinds. Uh, obviously even just the slightest little wind at sort of three to four, maybe 500 yards uh, can make a big difference. So it's something that you really need to take into account. Fortunately with the shape of the, uh, the valleys here the wind generally seems to get channeled from either left or right straight down the valley. As usual I'm using my uh, much trusted Remington uh, 260. It's a Remington 700 rifle. Uh, it's been customised by Paddy at uh, Dane Co Rifles. I've got a Night Force 5.5-22x50 uh, scope on the top there. It's a nice scope for long range shooting. And I'm using one of the um, MAE T12 Scout moderators on here from JMS Arms. The ammunition I'm using is all uh, hand loaded ammunition. I uh, reload using uh, 143 grain ELDX, Hornady ELDX bullets, and I'm currently using H4350 powder. Unfortunately, though, that powder's uh, been discontinued under the EU regulations, so before long I'm going to have to go back to the drawing board and work up another load for it. It's not long before we spot our first fox, but this one is too close to the brow of the hill for a safe shot. We watch as the fox makes its way across the field and down the hill while Mark gets ready for a shot. Unfortunately, this fox isn't hanging around and quickly disappears into cover. It's a beautiful morning this morning. We can see a few foxes around. Um, we're going to give it a little bit longer here and just see if anything shows. If not, we'll be uh, moving over to the other side of the valley and have a little walk about. Let's see if we can see anything. Uh, 
Suddenly, we spot movement. Our fox has ventured back out of the gorse bushes and Mark wastes no time lining up for a shot. So we was just about to pack up and move on to a different area and uh, I just caught sight of this one coming out of the gorse bushes and fortunately I was, I was lucky enough to just kind of predict where he was going to go, he followed a uh, pretty much a typical sort of path that foxes seem to follow on this little bit of ground, uh, come along the corner of the gorse there, uh, straight towards small rabbit burrows and luckily he stood around long enough and I already had the range dialed in to uh, be able to get a quick shot at him and um, rolled him over lovely. That was 421 yards. So it was quite a bit further than what a lot of my foxes are taken at. But uh, when you're shooting across this valley, very often the ranges are between three and 400 yards. With our first fox down, we head across the valley to retrieve it. Sign some fox activity, there's a bone there with some uh, fox scats on it and around it. So, there's definitely been one or two about on this side of the hill. So, being that we've seen several foxes up here this morning, I think what I'm going to have to do is um, have another visit at night uh, and have a little look round. So, we're heading back up onto the hill this evening. I uh, saw a few foxes yesterday, so I'm going to see if I can uh, come to terms with one or two of them tonight. Uh, I've got a couple of little toys with me tonight. Um, one's the uh, Outlaw Caller from Best Fox Call, Electronic Fox Caller. I'm going to give that a, a go this evening, see how I'll get on with that. And I'm uh, also using a N355 Pulsar um, Ultra Night Vision um, Scope. Which I've got on the 223. Uh, what else have I got? Oh, I'll be using a, um, a Pulsar XP38 thermal spotter as well. So, with that little lot, hopefully, we'll have a bit of success. Quietly, we sneak out onto the hillside. Mark loads the rifle and sets the Digisight Ultra Scope to standby mode. So this is the Outlaw Caller from Best Fox Call. We're going to give that a little go, see if that'll draw something in. Let's just go for a box standard rabbit call, baby rabbit call. That sounds like a good one. Okay, so play.
Well, that fox was only about 80 yards from me. Um, it was just mooching around in the grass there, so it made for a little bit of a tricky shot. I had to wait for it to sort of come clear and uh, present the shot, but uh, it went down nice and nice solid thump. So, I'm a little wander down, have a look, see if I can find it in this grass. There it is, didn't have to look too far. So, we found that with a the thermal. That's one of this, this year's cubs, little vixen, pretty little fox. This time we put a fox in from further down the valley. That one's another dog fox, so that's about the same distance, about 70 or 80 yards. And again, the uh, pulsar put the bullet where it needs to go. Job done. Again, that's probably another one of this year's cubs. Looks like uh, probably from the same family. That one's a dog, a dog and a vixen. So, two more. We won't be having problems with in the lambing season. I've had a particularly successful evening this evening. Two more foxes in the bag, that's three off of this hill in the last couple of days. So, uh, good result, and um, I'll be calling it a night. Well, that's a chally or two losing their brushes there. And now, it's the Shooting Show News. This is the Shooting Show News. Grouse moors are under scrutiny north of the border. A government review is underway investigating how moors are managed across rural Scotland. Although anti-shooters have used this to call for further restrictions, shooting organisations have still said they support the review. A joint statement said for decades now the grouse shooting community has been embracing reform and modernising land management practices. The best outcomes are achieved when people work together in pursuit of sensible shared goals. The online abuse of hunters and shooters is still going on, but there's now a new way to report it. The Countryside Alliance has launched an online portal where you can submit evidence of threats and bullying on the web and social media. This comes after a poll revealed that 62% of field sports followers have experienced some form of abuse. If you've got something to submit, head to the website on screen now. There's a new action plan to tackle illegal hair coursing. The Countryside Alliance says the law should be strengthened to stamp out this form of poaching, including giving police full seizure powers, revising sentencing guidelines and ensuring magistrates understand the full gravity of the offence. A spokesperson for the Alliance said no one should underestimate the terrible impact this criminality has on individuals and communities. And finally, it's now less than 100 days until the British shooting show. Taking place once again at the NEC, the show unites the biggest names in the global industry under one roof. Whether it's rifles, shotguns, air guns, scopes or clothing, there'll be something for everyone. Don't forget to buy your tickets online beforehand and beat the ticket office queues. Just head to shootingshow.co.uk to get yours. That was the Shooting Show News. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. 
please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you're not a member of Basque, it's time to join now. Basque, looking after your sport, looking after you.